How convenient would it be to have one central location for things like your company info and links to your legal pages and social media profiles so that if anything changes, you don't have to spend hours hunting for each instance on your website so that you can change them one by one. We're continuing how to build a business website in a weekend with lesson seven, setting up smart site. In this lesson, you'll learn how to set up smart sites so that you can input the information related to your business once and then have it populate throughout your website automatically. In this way, you won't have to keep entering in specific types of information every time it appears on your website. So for example, you can set up your address once and even if you change your footer template, you won't have to re-input that information. It'll just automatically populate. But before we do that, there's two things we should take care of first. First is permalink settings. So under settings and permalinks and under common settings, here is where you can choose your link format. I highly recommend that you choose the post name format. One reason is for SEO because search engines prefer what some people call friendlier URLs, which means they don't have lots of numbers and slashes, but it's also easier for your audience. So if anyone ever has to recite or remember the URL for a post, it's much easier to do if the URL is short and recognizable. The second thing I recommend doing is creating some essential pages for your website, such as your privacy policy, a disclaimer if necessary, terms and conditions, and your contact page, as well as your about page. Now at this point, you don't have to design these pages. It's just helpful to create these pages so that the links exist. Now the privacy policy and the blog page have been created for us. So we'll just go ahead and leave those as they are. However, you might want to take note of the links for those pages and you can do that by going to quick edit and looking at the slug for the page. So the URL for this page would be your domain name slash blog. So now let's take a look at site settings. You'll need to go to the Thrive dashboard. And once in the dashboard, you'll need to go to Smart Site and then click the Smart Settings button. And now we can fill out the global fields. So the company fields are pretty self-explanatory. You can simply fill these out with the corresponding information. Under Legal, these are the links that typically appear at the bottom of the page. And so now we can just input the links to the pages we just created. In the social section, you can link your social media profiles. So for Facebook, for the link text, I'll just call this Facebook. To get the link to your Facebook page, you can go to your page in Facebook, and then you'll use facebook.com slash your username for that page. And so that will be located on the Facebook page near the top after the at symbol. And then click save. For YouTube, let's go ahead and edit that. For the link text, I'll just call that YouTube for now. To get the link URL, you'll have to go to your YouTube channel. And in YouTube Studio, you'll need to go to the Customization tab and then Basic Info, and your channel URL will be listed on that page. So I'll just copy this, and I'll paste it in to the link URL. For Instagram, let's go ahead and edit that. For the link text, I'll call that Instagram. To get your Instagram link, you can go to Instagram, then go to your profile picture and click on profiles. And that will display the link to your Instagram page in the URL bar, or you can use Instagram.com slash your username, which is down here. And note that this is different from your display name, which is located at the top of the page. So I'll just paste this in and click save. And the last one we'll do is Twitter. So let's go to Twitter. And for the link URL, you can go to Twitter, 
go to your profile page, and then the link will be at the top of the page in the URL bar. Or you can use twitter.com slash and then your username, which is down here after the at symbol. So I'll just paste in the link and I'll click save. Now let's take a look at how these global fields are used. So I've got my contact page here. Let's go ahead and add a couple of columns. I'll choose the half and half layout. And now let's say I'd like to have a Google map in the left hand column and my company address in the right hand column. So let's add a Google maps element. I'll go ahead and enter my address. Let's go ahead and make a spacing adjustment here. And now let's go ahead and add a text element to the column on the right. And let's get rid of the sample text. So what I want to do is insert my company name. Now I could simply begin typing, but what I want to show you is how the global fields are used. So I'm going to go to the dynamic text icon, which looks like a stack of coins. And under dynamic text, I'll select global fields. In the second dropdown under company, I'm going to select name and I'll click insert. Then I'll go to the next line. And again, I'll go up to the dynamic text icon, select global fields, and then company address and insert. And then I'll go to the next line. And again, I'll select dynamic text, global fields, and this time I'll select phone number and insert. Okay, so as you can see, it didn't actually insert the actual company name, address, and phone number. But if I save the page and then go to preview, you'll see that the correct information is displayed. And so if my company information ever changes, all I have to do is simply go back to those global fields and change it there. And anywhere I've used global fields on my site, it will automatically update. If you would like to insert social follow links so that people can follow you on social media, those also use the global fields in smart site. So let's go ahead and add a social follow element. Now, if you don't like the style of these buttons, you can certainly change those to match your aesthetic. I'll leave them as they are. But what I want to show you is how to adjust the links for these actual buttons. So for Facebook, I'll go to the pencil icon to edit that. And so as you can see right now, the social link is a dynamic element and it is coming from the global site settings. And there's a little note here saying that you can edit that link from the smart site dashboard. And again, you can put these social follow links all over your website. And if that link changes, you can simply go to the smart site dashboard and change it once and it'll automatically update throughout your site. Now that you've set up smart site, let's move on to the next lesson. Thank you.